In today's video, we're taking a look at the latest trade rumors from around the NHL. We're focusing on teams like the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Ottawa Senators, the Calgary Flames, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. We have more updates on Corey Perry, where he may end up. More updates as well regarding the All-Star game. The coaches have now been confirmed. Uh, we also have a couple of major comebacks and interesting stories to take a look at tonight involving 47-year-old Terry Ryan and Cody Hodgson. We'll discuss the latest on them and everything else coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a couple of interesting stories I want to kick off the video here with tonight. Uh, first up, we got word last night on Saturday headlines from Elliot Friedman on Hockey Night in Canada that uh, 2008 top 10 pick Cody Hodgson is looking to make a comeback into pro hockey. Now, of course, he understands at this stage uh, where he's been out of the game quite some time that he's not going to go right to the NHL. Like, he's just looking for an opportunity. Hard to say. I don't know if he gets an AHL deal or what have you. Um, I'm not sure what, what the future holds for Cody Hodgson. But I can understand why he'd like a, a kind of a do-over here, if you will. He was drafted, like I said, a top-10 pick. Uh, considered an extremely smart player with terrific vision. Unfortunately, early in his career, he was battling a, uh, a condition called uh, malignant hypothermia, and it really impacted his muscles and, um, you know, really had a big effect on his career. He had to retire young. I believe he was only 26 when he was out of the game because of this condition. Um, now, of course, there's been a lot of medical um, you know, progress in that since uh, his retirement. And at this age, he's 33, soon to be 34. And he's in a much better spot with his health. Um, so he, at this stage, would like a kind of a do-over. He never really, yes, he got to play in the NHL. He, you know, got a, a fairly lucrative contract before he ended up calling her quits. But at the end of the day, um you know, never really fully realized his full potential. And whereas largely medically related, it's kind of understandable as to why he would want uh, another shot. Obviously, he feels healthy and feels like he can still do it. So why not give it a try? So it's difficult to say if or when he's going to get a chance or if, if so, at what level of hockey it's going to be. Like I said, I don't know if an NHL team would – Bring him in either on a either a PTO or for he goes to like the AHL on a PTO or something to that effect. I mean, you can go to the American Hockey League and your tryouts can last up to twenty five games. Um, you know, maybe he goes to the East Coast League. Hard to say. I don't know where he goes, but it's just very interesting to hear that after being away from the game for. Uh, I believe it's like eight years now, uh, or going on eight years, that Cody Hodgson is looking to make a comeback. And it's just nice to hear that his health is in a much better spot and that uh, he feels he can uh, still play. So I'll be curious to see if a comeback materializes at any level of pro hockey and uh, certainly something that I want to follow for sure. The other big story here today, which uh, was mentioned, I believe, on uh, Hockey Night Canada briefly last night. Of course, uh, Paul Bazanet was part of the um, Hockey Night in Canada panel. He does that occasionally, uh, usually on Saturday nights every few weeks or so. Uh, and he had noticed a story from Terry Ryan. Of course, Terry Ryan, most of you, depending on how long you've been following the game, will know him. Um, because now he's not just a hockey player or a former hockey player anymore. He's also an accomplished actor. Uh, if you're familiar with the TV show Shore Z, which is obviously about hockey, um, Terry Ryan plays a very good role in that. He's gotten a chance to really expand his acting gig. He's written books. He's got a podcast. Uh, you know, obviously his life's in a pretty good spot. Um, you know, compared to where things were way back. But he's 47 now. Today's actually his birthday. He was, of course, Ryan went eighth overall way back in 1995 to the Montreal Canadiens. Never got a huge opportunity in the NHL. He did play a handful of games, played a lot in the American Hockey League. Uh, I remember having a chance to watch him play, actually, because their farm team uh, from the Habs was here in my home city of Fredericton, New Brunswick at that point in time. Um, and he played, I think it was two or three seasons for sure, um, you know, mostly full years in the AHL. I got to see him play quite a bit. He was, uh, you know, a skilled guy, but at the same time, uh, you know, played a, a rugged style of game, not afraid to mix it up and just, you know, defend his teammates and just really an overall beauty kind of guy, like just your typical hard nose, you know, talented player. Uh, of course, he hails from Newfoundland, um, and there's a situation going on right now in the East Coast League, which is the 
you know, two tiers down from the NHL, uh, the Newfoundland Growlers, who is an affiliate of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, so they have the Leafs, then there's the Marlies at the AHL, then the Growlers in Newfoundland and the East Coast League. And they, they're down a bunch of bodies uh, due to a, a bad illness going through the, the team, I guess, or something like that. Um, team is now actually head coached by former NHLer Matt Cook. And he actually was called and given a chance to play in a game today. Um, because they were so short players. And, of course, he lives in the area. He watches them play often. Uh, he knows a lot of the guys on the team. He's friends with a lot of them. And they, uh, a lot of, I think a lot of the players recommended, like, well, why don't we see if Terry will play for us? Anyway, so he actually got a chance to play today on his birthday, 47 years of age, in Newfoundland. Uh, had a heck of a game, too. Ended up, uh, you know, didn't uh, score any goals, but had a, some good chances. Ended up uh, dropping the gloves and getting in a fight. Um, just a very emotional day. Like you know, the crowd went absolutely nuts for him. A huge ovation uh, was announced at the end of the game. Went out for one last kind of you know uh, lap around the ice to uh, acknowledge the fans. Uh, and of course, he uh, uh, he's got a daughter now. But of course, uh, his daughter's young enough that she never seen him play pro before. Uh, might have seen him play senior hockey or whatnot. But, you know, thankfully for his sake, he still skates. Uh, he said three or four days a week. He plays a lot of roller hockey now. So he's still, you know, in, for his age, in, in decent shape. So he, he knew from a cardio perspective that uh, he figured he'd be, you know, at least okay. He just didn't want to embarrass himself out there. But he actually had a pretty good day. He didn't play a ton. But uh, he did get, a, you know, enough shifts to be able to have an impact on the game. And it's just not something you see very often. So, you know, here we have Cody Hodgson wanting to make a comeback at age 34. You had Terry Ryan making a, you know, may, albeit a brief one-game return to pro hockey at age 47 uh, in the East Coast League. Uh, certainly something that's just some good stories that we don't often get a chance to talk about here because they're not very common that you hear about them. Uh, in case you haven't seen Terry Ryan starring in Shorzy, which is available on Crave here in Canada, Canada. Um, it's a it's a really I personally think it's a hilarious um, you know little show. So certainly recommend if you haven't checked it out. I believe season three is what they're on now. Uh, I know I got to get caught up on it. I watched the first couple seasons and um, yeah, it's it's a really good show. If you if you love uh, hockey, I think you'll appreciate the, the comedy in it as well. So certainly check that out uh, too. So some interesting stories to kick off the video here today. Some uh, other news and notes around the league. Some uh, some roster moves. Uh, we saw Vegas today uh, officially placed Jack Eichel on injured reserve. We know he didn't play yesterday. Yesterday, uh, some concern about how the injury is going. It's going to take be a little bit of time. Obviously, he's going to be out longer. He's where he's officially on IR. Uh, they've recalled Brendan Brisson, one of their top picks from a couple of years back in the NHL draft, son of uh, top agent Pat Brisson, uh, to see if he can get his first. Uh, a taste of NHL duty here. Uh, so it looks like Eichel is going to be out for some time. And if it ends up being anything more serious where he's going to be out longer, that could be a big blow for them. Vegas has actually been in a bit of a tailspin lately. Haven't had the greatest stretch here in the past 10 games uh, to be without their top center. Certainly would not make matters any better. So certainly uh, we'll have to monitor that situation as well. Uh, in Calgary, they've uh, obviously had some injuries. They had recalled a uh, young defenseman, Yan Kuznetsov, former St. John Sea Dog. Uh, he's been sent back to the minors in the AHL and in St. Louis, Tyler Tucker has been sent to the American Hockey League on a conditioning stint. So uh, he'll be down there for a couple of games and then likely be recalled from there. Uh, we did get more updates as well regarding the NHL All-Star game. The coaches for the uh, squads are now confirmed because obviously they go by the standings uh, as of a certain date, which is now passed. Uh, the coaches will be, of course, Rick Tockett uh, for the Pacific Division, Rick Bonus for the Central, Jim Montgomery in the Atlantic, and Peter Laviolette in the metro uh we also uh will see Ilya samsonov make his or i guess i don't want to call it his re-debut but his return to the nhl tonight the game actually just started as i started to record here uh the detroit red wings and toronto maple leafs game actually was delayed tonight due to the uh the ongoing uh, issue with uh, some bad weather uh in uh, in the u.s uh, i know it's been bad in certain parts of uh, uh the eastern u.s and obviously a lot of teams are kind of 
getting out late or stranded or what have you. I know there was uh, the game in Buffalo yesterday with the Canucks. Uh, Obviously, they were kind of stuck there too, and Detroit got really late uh, out on their way to Toronto. So they had to push back the start time 30 minutes, and even then I thought they might have to do it again um, because they only got to the arena, I think, probably 80 to 90 minutes before puck drop. Uh, The Leafs staff had to be extremely helpful and land a lot of helping hands for them to try to put together a locker room in record time. I mean, it's a big job with all their staff to get all the equipment in and get everything all ready for them on the road like that. So certainly nice for the Leaf uh, people to kind of help out uh, so that the game could proceed. Uh, but that was a little bit late starting. But this big story tonight, regardless of all that, will be the performance, good, bad, or ugly, for Ilya Samsonov. Uh, I'm sure Leaf fans want to see him come back and have a, a good showing to get his confidence back. I am very surprised though, that he when he was recalled and is getting a chance to start without even playing a game in the minors. I, I honestly think they were afraid that they would see a similar scenario that happened with Jack Campbell in Edmonton. He went down, uh, had a little bit of time off, started to play in the AHL, and it didn't go well. And it just went from bad to worse. And I think they're concerned that if he goes down there and has a bad game or two, that he's going to be completely wrecked. So instead, they just gave him basically a week or so uh, time off for a mental reset, uh, work with the coaches, watch some video, uh, look at what's gone well for him in the past and kind of try to get back to that. Um, so obviously, like I said, if he has a great night, it's going to give the team a big boost and they'll, uh, a lot of people will be feeling a lot better about the goaltending situation moving forward. If he has a horrible night, especially after the Red Wings coming in really late and had really not nearly the prep time that they normally would have, um, then that's going to be... It's going to be bad. I mean, it's just that simple. It's going to be one extreme probably or the other. If he has a bad night tonight, uh, it's it's it could be the end of him. It's hard to say, right? Like you just hope that for his sake, it's the very least uh, not – uh, you know, a good showing so that he can uh, kind of regain his confidence. But as we saw with Jack Campbell going to the American Hockey League, uh, to find that has not worked out at all. He's still there after all this time. And at this point, Jack Campbell's not expected back. I mean, Stuart Skinner's been doing great. Uh, Calvin Pickard has been running as the backup. There's speculation that Oilers may end up finding another goalie. They, you know, they've also, uh, you know, have Olivia Rod- Rodriguez as well. Um, who they've contemplated, you know, giving time, playing time to as well. So I don't know what's going to happen to Campbell, but I know the, the Leafs were afraid that the same thing would happen to Samsonov, which is why I think things went down the way they did. Uh, of course, last night's game in Colorado versus Colorado, uh, two uh, for the Leafs was not good. They had a three nothing lead, they blew it. Lots of sloppy play and uh, poor performances afterwards led to that uh, game slipping away from them. I know Sheldon Keep called out some of his top players after the game really without even using their names talking about how strong and how much the avalanche top players he said like when you get like you know mckinnon Rantanen, McCarr, and like Taves and that whole top unit out there together, it's like a whole other level. He said it's not even top of the NHL, it's like above that. So he called out his own guys without even saying anything negative about them, just talking about how much better the Avalanche top players were. So I'll be curious to see if the team responds tonight and if Samsona can come through. Even John Tavares barely played in the third period. Uh, he only had two shifts early on. He sat for... Uh, well, it was in real time, it was 21 minutes. Uh, he, he was solid on the bench, and then they threw him out there in the last shift trying to help get the uh, the game back to get it tied before the Avalanche hit the empty net. To me, it's a bad, that was a bad call by Keefe. You can't set a guy on the bench for almost a whole period um, and then expect him to go out there in the last minute like that. Uh, you could tell he had heavy legs, was barely skating, wasn't moving his feet. Like It's hard to get re-engaged when you've been sitting for that long. I just I don't get why he uh, went about things the way he did. Tonight, they've got a really different-looking lineup as well, which would be uh, curious to see. Bobby McMahon is out because of injury. Uh, Nick Robertson gets back in and on the pregame. I know Elliot Friedman and the panel were talking about uh, Robertson, and Friedman went on to say some interesting things, which kind of leads us to think that you know Nick Robertson is, is most likely going to be used as a trade chip by this team ahead of the deadline because you know they're going to want to make additions to try to strengthen this team before the playoffs. Uh, obviously, they talked a lot about the fact that the Leafs, even though they've, you know, sitting good in the standings, they don't have a 
lot of regulation wins compared to many of the top teams. And right now, if the playoffs started today, they'd have another matchup with the Florida Panthers. And we saw what happened last year. And I know the whole panel, uh, who are typically pretty pro-Leaf, uh, were not fond of that matchup at all. Uh, so I do think the Leafs, as the season goes along, will kind of start to prepare for whoever their opponent in the first round is likely going to be. Um, and at this rate, Robertson very well could be a trade chip. Uh, Freeman went on to say that Nick Robertson essentially has to come out and have a huge game and be extremely noticeable just to stay in the lineup and feels like his time in Toronto might be kind of coming closer to an end of things. You know, if he doesn't, um, you know, get uh, to a point where he's really uh, having an impact on the game every night. Um and that basically he's kind of auditioning for all the other teams for a potential trade. Um, so he didn't come out and say Robertson's being shopped or anything of that nature, but to say that his time in Toronto could be very limited and that he's basically auditioning for other teams, that kind of leads us to think that he knows more that Robertson, which is not the first time we've heard this, that he could be used as a trade chip for upgrades at the deadline. Uh, they do have a lot of scouts at that game tonight as well from a variety of teams. I think there's eight or nine different teams that are watching uh, in person tonight with the Red Wings and the Leafs. So be curious to see where that goes. Uh, last night as well on Saturday Headlines, Friedman also talked about the Calgary Flames and Jacob Markstrom. There was in the last couple of days some uh, speculation that things might be heating up on a Jacob Markstrom trade. Uh, Friedman went on to say that essentially at this point, the Calgary Flames have not asked their goaltender, who has a full no-move clause, to waive that. Um, so at this point, he feels that for them to consider trading Markstrom, that's going to be a huge ask. It's a big, big uh, you know, return that they're looking for to even consider it and they won't talk to him about waving unless they find a deal that they really like it will help the team moving forward and that's going to be tough to find uh, if markstrom ends up staying uh, then there's a good chance that vladar is going to get moved that's just quite you know simple to the fact that they want to get dustin wolf to the nhl in long term um, obviously one of the other two goalies in front of them have to go i don't know that though they really I'm not sure how they if they really feel strong enough about Vladar to keep him there as a uh, either either tandem with Wolf or as a backup if Markstrom were to move. So I don't know how exactly what their feelings are on that. But as far as Markstrom goes, I do think there's a chance the Devils have been the main team linked to him. Um, and not to say that their interest isn't high. I do believe it probably is. But there's certainly other goalies out there too. And to get a legit starting goaltender is not going to come cheap. Obviously, John Gibson's name has been out there too. Uh, obviously, he dealt with a recent injury too. So that may not help his case, uh, depending on how long of a issue he's dealing with. And of course, you got Jake Allen in Montreal, another guy who's kind of a perfect tandem goalie, really. Jake, I think, had his most success in the NHL when he was paired with another goalie who could play play an equal amount and it was pretty well known that it was going to be 50 50 that seems to be the time when he had his most success um so we'll see what happens but certainly look for markstrom to get uh, a lot of uh you know i think his name is gonna be out there a lot in a rumor mill it's just gonna be a tough trade to pull off and at this point we don't know that the flames are like how serious they are about going to him to wave that no that no move and also jake gensel in pittsburgh another name to watch as well uh obviously we've talked about him off and on here and freeman confirms that the main um i think part of this is going to determine if gensel stays or goes is the future direction of the team kyle dubas and uh, the management team there in ownership have to determine the direction that they're going. Now, the Penguins are not that far off from getting it, like, you know, securing a playoff spot. But there's also lots of teams in the mix, and this team is clearly flawed. Uh, they, as much as they have lots of good individual players, there, there's a lot to be concerned about as well. And there's a lot of people convinced that this team maybe either made a mistake by acquiring Eric Carlson, that it's not the right player, not the right fit, and... You know, maybe another off-season major shakeup is in order to get this team back on track. I do believe Kyle Dubas is not going to go like they're not going to go down a rebuild as long as Crosby and Malkin and Latang are there. They're not going to do that. But at the same time, I don't know that they have or they're confident that they have the right mix to uh, to to win the way they're structured right now. And with Jake Gensel, um, you know. He's not far off from 30 to sign a long-term deal. Does that make sense for them right now when they've got their other top three guys long-term? They still got Brian Russ for a few more years after doing an extension last year as well. Um, you know, is that 
what's the best move here? And to be honest, I think Gensel's going to be a productive player for a while yet. No issues there. However, I think the big thing is they just don't want to have too many older players with long-term deals if they think this team is going to need a major reset in the not-too-distant future. They'll probably try a couple more years with these core veterans to see if they can get to a winning point. If not, they're going to have to start going in, you know, in a, in a bigger teardown. And I don't know what uh, Dewis is going to do, but there's, I think there's a good chance, to be honest, at this point, that Gensel will be available. We already heard from his agent saying that they're not expected to sign a contract, uh, that they kind of want to wait and see how things play out, and that they also were very interested in the team direction before they commit as well. So we'll see where things land with him. And one last update on Corey Perry. Uh, there is some speculation that one of the, you know, I would suspect, Many teams will show at least some interest, but where he could end up might be just back where he was before Chicago, and that's Tampa. Uh, obviously, had a couple of productive years there on a the fourth line, looked upon as a good teammate, a glue guy. They very well respected while he was there. Of course, they moved on from both him and Pat Maroon, uh, and of course, now they don't have either player. They do have Austin Watson, of course, who's a little different. Uh, I think uh, Perry and Maroon, I think typically would probably be a little bit more able to contribute to the offense than Watson. And not that they, not any of them are huge, are huge that way, but Watson's probably the least talented in that respect. At least I think that's fair to say. Watson's a good uh, a good fourth liner to some degree. Doesn't tend to win a lot of his fights, but he will stick up for his teammates. Um, so, you know, there's going to be lots of interest in Perry. There's no doubt we've already talked about that, that there was mutual interest with the Leafs. Uh, the Panthers were another team, and I wouldn't rule out a return to Tampa, and the Oilers were mentioned. Uh, you know, there's lots of teams too. I think there's a good chance, personally. I think he'll end up in the East, um, but we'll see where things go. But Tampa's also in a mix to land their former fourth line player. So let me know your thoughts on all today's news and rumors down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Uh-huh.